All right, well, here, let's bring in another comment or a question from Robert Cox. Um, this is one from YouTube. The USA is one of the three large nations, USA, China, and Russia, that are competing, but how could they be cooperating instead? Yeah, well, that is uh, kind of what the we are hoping for with climate change in Paris, right, in the abstract. I do think that part of the problem is that we have the people that have a hold of this conversation have everything betting on this competitive model. And so they the way it works is, you know, for the purpose of capital formation, nations don't matter. But for the purpose of manipulating the system, they use national identity as a way to marginalize the interests that they're trying to subdue. And so I, I do think that um, that is the model we have. We, we are not going to attain any kind of planetary equilibrium ecologically without some form of cooperation. And so I guess we have to kind of, that's why I, I have been so impressed by the direct diplomacy that you see like Medea Benjamin do in Project Pink, going to areas of conflict, peeking behind the cur uh, curtain, and then engaging people in Cuba, people in Palestine directly. That kind of short circuits this conversation that's controlled by the forces of polarity that benefit by this kabuki of competition. Well, I want to keep on this trend. This is um, a comment from someone actually on Twitter that we're able to bring in. Eric on Twitter says socialism is trending on Twitter right now. How do we use this moment to get unstuck from American capitalism and get people on Twitter on the streets? <laughs> well, I think it's to I think it's to reflect back on the things that have that have advanced America historically, which have been collective action. Uh, one of the problems is our history is framed uh, around great white men. And so the idea is that individuals, uh, and that's what you're brought up with in a conventional upbringing in school, that individuals make a difference. So we don't really have uh, a really good labor history piece. That's one of the important things that I do that Stuck Nation tells. There's a, hey, I plugged the book. We're, we're, we're all 45 minutes in and I'm plugging the book. But one of the things in the book is it tracks what I'm familiar with, which is lower Manhattan and the history of how um, female garment workers, uh, primarily um, undocumented or new, certainly new arrivals, primarily women in their early 20s, had a general strike in 1909 and were really redefining the nature of the garment industry in Lower Manhattan, uh, it was out of that, that that the Triangle Fire happened because the owners were uh, were the most resistant to unionization, and they had locked the doors and made it so that they controlled uh, people coming in and out because they were trying to throttle this organizing effort that was really winning. I mean, imagine that, 20,000 undocumented immigrants today in any city coming together and organizing collectively. And what was amazing was that they were supported by the wealthy women of the period from society who were themselves pushing for the vote. So there was a synergy between class and immigration and, and, uh, and that came together in a potent way. And when that fire happened and uh, some dozens, over 120 young women died, it galvanized, which turned into a global movement for the a labor movement. And that success has been replicated around the world. Now, what happened was in the 1980s with Ronald Reagan, when he fired all the air traffic controllers and years and years of capital beating up on the labor movement and the labor movement itself getting co-opted through organized crime, self-dealing, some of which goes on today, got to be honest, uh, what ended up happening was labor was short-circuited. And so what we had, and this is covered frequently in Economic Update, the 1970s saw this weird thing happen where productivity continued to take off and wages declined or stayed flat for people. That trend has pretty much continued. And so what's happening is people are working longer and having less to show for it. And what happened was, capital's not stupid. Instead of actual disposable income, they gave you household debt. So you felt like you were taking that trip to Disney, but you paid for it for five years. And so this is the part of the, con the contract, the social contract of work is being upended as we speak. Uh, we are seeing a generation that wants work on their terms. 
and it doesn't show any signs of letting up. 